English or a language, I'm sure we do. This is enough to start. Of course, you don't go into issues you have no knowledge of and start speaking, but if you have sort of ikhlas, this is enough. And the very least you can do if you're someone who's not confident and not doesn't have a lot of uh, confidence in giving da'wah, is give them a leaflet. We all probably work with non-Muslims. Give them a book. Pass, but let them see the reality of Islam. Let them see that Islam is not what is portrayed in many, in many of the media. Let them see that Islam is not what many of these people are doing in the name of Islam. Let them see the realness of Islam. Give them a book. What does it cost you to give them a free book? There are many places like Dar al Bur, like the Al Siraj exhibition in Shindala. Many places you can get free literature. What is stopping you from passing your colleagues? When you're driving through the petrol station and you have the Filipino or Nepali or Indian, whatever nationality they may be, pumping your petrol, what is stopping you from saying, Hello, would you like this book? Most of them will be happy to take this book from you. When you're driving through the drivings and you're ordering Baskin Robbins or McDonald's or whatever it might be, what is stopping you from handing over a small ask them, would you like a book? And handing it to them. So this is the very least we can do. None of us have an excuse at all not to give da'wah. Even if you, someone cannot speak a word of English and the person in front of you is Japanese, give him a Japanese book. There is nothing stopping us giving da'wah. And a very important thing we must do, and we see this in our times, we must clarify. Clarify the reality of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu at a time, and we've, hopefully you haven't, I saw for the first time by mistake recently, by not intentionally going to look for it, but I saw the photos, or the cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and it's really, it's really a disgusting thing, and it's our job to clarify this reality. It's our job to show the reality of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to show him he is not like these carrots. All of you have seen the cartoon Aladdin, and they have a character called Jaff, Jaffa, Jaffa. He is drawn to be very evil. If you saw how they draw Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you can't imagine, it's twice as bad as that. So it's our job as Muslims to clarify the reality of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, show that he is not a person who promoted terrorism, a person who taught them to kill people of other religions. He wasn't a person who loved, a person who loved violence, and a person who loved to torture people and all of these things they say. Show them the examples when he was in Mecca and the people were abusing him and putting the, the entrails, the insides of 30 camels on his back and grabbing him and spitting on him and insulting his believers. What did he do? Did he go behind closed doors and say, those dirty kafar, those evil people, what did he say? He said, he said to, he said to his Lord, Ummati, Ummati, my people, and he cried. He cried because he wanted to save them. He wanted them to be guided. Does this sound like a man of violence? And even when he was forced to leave Mecca and to go to Medina, him and his followers, because they were being threatened with death, and they even tried to kill him, and he took his believers and went after to Medina, and he became a person who was like a leader. He had hundreds and thousands of followers. So he had an army, you could say. He had people who would do whatever he said. And what do we see? When a Jewish man came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, and grabbed him by his collar, and shook him, and said to him, Oh Muhammad, you owe me money. Give me my money. What did the Prophet Muhammad do? When his companion, Umar, was ready to take his sword, he said, shall I, shall I strike him, O Muslim Allah? What did the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, do? With all these thousands of followers, with all this power, he was the leader of Medina. Did he say yes? Or did he say no on me? And he replied to the Jewish man, yes, I do owe you money. However, the money is due at such and such a date, not now. However, please take your money and go. Did he take any kind of revenge? No. And what about the story of the begging man who came and grabbed him from behind? from his collar and yanked him backwards so hard that it left a mark on his neck. Again, the companions were ready to attack this man to defend the messenger of Allah. Did he say an eye for an eye? Did he say take revenge? Did he say whip him, kill him, put him in prison? No. He said leave him. He said please, what's wrong? Why are you angry? What's made you do this? And he said, I'm hungry and I'm poor. I don't have any food. But Prophet Muhammad 
What did he do? Being as Allah tells us, Rahmatan min alameen, he is a mercy to mankind. What did he do? He asked him to bring a camel. And he said, put on the back of this camel food and dates and provision, and he gave it to the Bedouin man. Let the people see this. Let them see when the Muslims became so much in number that when they went back to Mecca, what they call the Fatih of Mecca, the opening of Mecca, when they went back to the Muslims, thousands in numbers, and only a few of the non-Muslims. What did they do? Did they do what we see even in two modern times sometimes? Did they go into Mecca and massacre everybody? Did they say this person and that person? They killed our friends, our Muslims. They did this to us. What did the Prophet Muhammad do? He did something that is unheard of in history. Even the most noblest of kings and the most noblest of rulers, they did not do this. Even until modern times, even until recently, people would, would never have done this. He would go to Mecca and he said to the people, I have forgiven all of you. You can all live in peace. So does this sound like a man who is a man of violence and is a man who encourages people to kill? Show them the reality of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu I would also recommend giving them a book about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And we invite people in the audience, if there are any Muslims here today in the audience, and any people who may watch this video, go to yourselves and read the seerah, the biography of the Prophet Muhammad. As someone said recently, this is an open book. You can come and read it. You don't hide anything from anybody. You can read it from beginning to end. Read his life. And you can come to your own conclusion on what the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was. So that is one of the main things, in my opinion, Allah Alam, that we should do. We should show that the reality of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, especially as we see every few months, every year, a new cartoon or a new thing appears in whichever country. And another, another thing we can do is being good Muslims. Not good Muslims by just growing our beards and having a short thorough. Be good Muslims by doing what is more important than that, having good manners and characters. Having good manners and characters. And if I can recall currently the great scholar Ibn Mubarak, he said that we are in more need of good manners than we are of knowledge. We are more in need. It's more important for us to have good manners than knowledge. So that is how important good manners are. And the Prophet Sallallahu you see so many sayings. And if I was to be with you today, I would not finish. I would be here for days and months mentioning the, the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. How many sayings of Muhammad? He gives people, hu he, gives, he discusses human rights, animal rights. All of these things we see now, animal rights, human rights, the rights of the women, animal shelters for injured animals. The Muslims, the teachers of the Prophet Muhammad, they were the first to say all of this. The Muslims were the first to implement rights of the poor by forcing the people to pay zakat when they, after the Prophet Muhammad died, they refused to pay and Abu Bakr made them pay. Muslim, Islam, the teachers of the Prophet Muhammad were the first one, not Robin Hood. The Muslims, they were the first people to implement rights for the poor and make it a law where you have to do it or you'll be punished by law. And the same so many rights. And the Prophet Muhammad, even neighbors, what did the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu say? He was sitting down one time and he sat with his companions and he said, La Yu'min, La Yu'min, La Yu'min. He does not believe. He does not truly believe. He does not truly believe. And they said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, who is this person who does not truly believe? And he said, the person who goes to sleep with a full stomach while his neighbor is starving, is hungry. So we can see that, we can see by following this example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and he was sent for this reason. The Prophet Sallallahu said, إِنَّمَا بِرِثْتُ لِأُكَمِّلِ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ That I was only sent, I was sent to perfect the noble characteristics, the noble manners. This is one of his purposes of being sent to the people to show us how to have manners. And just to end on this clip of, of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I think it's important for the non-Muslims who may be here and may view this, to just hear a couple of statements of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these statements are about kindness and gentleness. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, peace be upon him, he said about gentleness, he said, لا يكون رفق في شيء إلا زانا ولا ينزع من شيء إلا أهانا The gentleness and kindness is 
is not adding to anything, whether it's speech or action, except that it makes this thing more beautiful. And gentleness and kindness is not taken away from something, except that it makes this thing become ugly and defaces it and takes away the goodness from it. And in another saying, he said, Man yahram al rafq yahram al khair. Whoever is deprived of having this gentleness and kindness in his deeds and sayings, then he is deprived ultimately of goodness. And I really want to end with a message to any non Muslims that may be here or may watch this. And that is to think about what I've said and to look into this way of life. Look into it with an open mind and look into its beliefs, its teachings, its logical teachings and ideologies. And I ask personally to test Islam and test your current religion and test the religions of the world with three things. One, is the belief in God logical? Test this for all religions. Is the belief in God logical? Does it describe God as being the all-powerful? One who does not rest or make mistakes or repent or wrestle with prophets or is manifest in many statues and animals, etc. Or does it say to you that the God, your God is nothing like his creation and is above his creation and for him to be God, he can be nothing like his creation. And number two, the second aspect to look into and to test Islam and all religions with is look at the scripture of the book. Look at the scripture and the book of the religion. Is it intact? Is it uncorrupted? Is it not changed since the day? Or is it, has it been changed? Or was it written tens and hundreds of years later? Or was it in fact just teachings of a man written down or stories of ancient warriors and kings and princes who have been elevated to the level of God? And third, does the religion provide you with all of your answers, with divine answers to all of aspects of your life. Can this religion tell you how you should eat, how you should sleep, how you should marry, how you should work, how you should bank your finances? And with that, I really want to end first of all by uh, asking Allah to accept all of our deeds. And any mistakes I made are truly from me and from the Shaytan. And uh, I thank you all for being here and listening to this. And I end with the uh, pray praise of Allah and sending peace and blessings on the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Next we have brother Abdullah Shaki who was born who was born as Ashish Shaki who embraced Islam at the age of 17. His mother and sister took Shahada over the school a year later. So I call upon Brother Abdullah Shetty. I begin with the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the one who has created you and me for the sole purpose of worshipping Him. And uh, foremost, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to share my story. I would also like to thank you all for uh, taking our time and coming here to listen to our stories. My name is uh, Abdullah Shetty and I, uh, my previous name was Ashish. Uh, I come from a place called Urupi and I think most of them over here are Indian, so I think you know this place. Urupi is also known as the temple city of India. So I come from a family, uh, the Shetty background and uh, I think the, I don't, uh, the time given to me, I don't think I'll be able to complete the whole story in, uh, you know, in detail. So I'll just keep up uh, some parts. Maybe if you have some questions, you can ask in the end. Um, before Islam, uh, being born, you know, brought up in a Shakti family, it's, uh, we are not uh, religious as such. Uh, we tend to become religious during the Diwali and during some festivals. 
So, now this is the case of most of Hindus. Uh, if you ask them, 